Okay, so we're going to be talking today about a topic that is actually close to all of our hearts mm -hmm. because we are four women, four yes. women. Right. And we're going to be talking about gender without rival. Yep. And uh, it's, not, it's not because we want to incite gender wars, but this is a huge issue. And um, I would just like each person to kind of talk about how this has played out in their life, how they've seen this as a struggle. I'm going to open up with my story yeah. um then i didn't put it in a book but i think it, maybe i put it in another book anyway it doesn't matter <laughs> um so Read my husband <laughs> youth pastor me young mom mm -hmm. 31 years of age uh and he it, actually i might have been 29 and he said something like hey i'm going to haiti and i really feel like the holy spirit told me you're supposed to cover my service and I was pregnant with Austin, so it was 89, so I was 29. Mm -hmm. I, okay, I know you guys were concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> and so I said, I don't feel like the Holy Spirit said that to you. I feel like the Holy Spirit said, Pastor Carlos should come in and cover mm -hmm. the service. And he said, no, Lisa, I want you mm -hmm. to, I'm not going to tell anybody that you're coming because I, I know how they'll react if a woman mm -hmm. speaks. So I'm going to surprise them. I'm going to do a video announcement about how much I love you and, and they'll all honor you. And so my husband does this little video announcement and I'm sitting in the back and he says, my my, one of my favorite preachers is going to be speaking to you tonight. It's a, he built it all up for, for weeks ahead of time. It's a surprise guest. And then he said, Lisa Bevere. And all I heard at that point was metal chairs being scraped across wow. the floor, yeah. thrown into the wow. stack, people folding up the chairs, saying, we are not going to sit here while a woman teaches. Oh this is unscriptural. And mm -hmm. these are people we had poured into, poured into as college and career pastors mm -hmm. for at least two years. And then I sat in the back just watching everybody exit. And then I went up to the front and I just looked at everybody and said, you know, I wish I could actually be one of those people exiting out the back door. And I said, but here's the truth. Yeah. I'm in submission to my husband, and I do believe that women need mm -hmm. to have a voice in the house of God. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't exercising authority over anybody. I don't even know if I was teaching. I was more just sharing. And yeah. that night, actually, someone came to our house while my husband was out of town. I'm pregnant with my second baby. I've got Addison upstairs and banged on our bedroom window to terrify me. And oh this, is, this is what it used to be. And so it's gotten yeah. so much better. Yeah. Absolutely. But it is still an issue. Yeah. And Hannah, what have, you, what have you seen with this whole gender issue? I mean, you're in a ministry that we celebrate women, but what, what has been your experience? Well, I absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt, know that you and women like you have paid a dear, dear mm -hmm. price yeah. Yeah. for us to be able to come up into a different environment. Not that it's mm -hmm. not still present, because it very much still is, mm -hmm. but even with Juliana and I being raised by a mother who was strong, who she had to accomplish things, and she didn't have the luxury of waiting no. for someone mm -hmm. to give her permission mm -hmm. to wow. step out in order for the sake of her children and in, in, for the sake of raising yeah. us up in a way mm -hmm. where we knew it wasn't in our own strength. It was yeah. by yeah. the grace of God. That was some, yeah. that was a verse she always said over us that this is a gift. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this, we are saved by grace. Mm -hmm. It is a gift from God that no one should boast. Mm -hmm. And that is how she lived out being a mom, a uh, single for a, for a lot of the years of not, raising not because six she children. Wanted to no, be, not at because all. Because she was abandoned. No, yeah, not at all. But she she didn't live it out of this like angst or hatred. She yeah. lived it from this place of strength that came from the Lord, and we knew that yeah. as her daughters. And so ra being raised in that, it was like I mean I I just remember so tangibly. Um, going to the to the word and knowing that that's what it was it was saying to me that it was like you have been given all of these things now live fully walk mm -hmm. into these things don't allow things yeah. to hold you back even though people yeah. just human nature will try yeah. to place those confines on on one another mm -hmm. and i i just am so thankful for those examples that said mm -hmm. you're going to see some things it's going to be discouraging it's going to be disheartening especially as we want to live out this life that we're called to you know we're all called to preach the gospel we're yeah. all yeah. called to Whether make disciples that it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. that's yes. how we're called to live our yeah. lives yeah. and in gender in the in my mind was never something that was going to disqualify me yeah. or be divisive 
Yeah. You know, no. and and, uh, and just in fairness, because I know there's a lot of people that are new to this discussion, they don't know what's going on. You know, just in fairness, a lot of the proponents that say that women should have no voice in the church, mm -hmm. they go back to Eve. They say because mm -hmm. Eve misled right. Adam in yeah. the garden, yeah. and Adam listened to the voice of his wife, we need to shut down right. the voice of women, and we need to blow up mm -hmm. the voice of men. But here's the truth. Adam and Eve were never meant to have no voice. And they were supposed to use their words on the serpent, not on That's one right. another. Wow. And for too long, the women have yelled at the men mm -hmm. and said, give us our place at the table. And right. the men have told the women, sit down and shut up. And the truth is we need to actually begin to declare yeah. God's word and speak to the enemy. It is written. That's right. And when Jesus mm -hmm. came to seek and save that which was lost, mm -hmm. he recovered everything mm -hmm. that Adam and Eve mistreated in the garden right. and if we're going to be legalists which is what i find a lot of people do they were very legalistic mm -hmm. about this yeah. and we need to say that if a woman is easily deceived then mm -hmm. a man is always a betrayer right. and if you don't want to be labeled as always a betrayer always someone who would sell out his birthright then you better not label women as always easily deceived mm -hmm. first to sin because my bible actually says that adam was the one who sinned and the second Adam, Jesus, is the one who redeemed us. So why are we even fighting about yeah. this? We're all in Christ. But feminine and masculine has different expressions, That's different right. roles. Mm -hmm. And all of that is necessary if we're going to see the gospel go out. Because I have different access to different people in the yeah. world than John has. Absolutely. And John has the commission. And again, I would say to you that the Great Commission, go into all the world and make disciples, is your permission. That's yeah. right. It's your permission. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus That's is good. saying to you... Go, yeah. go, whatever your world is, mm -hmm. go into that world and make disciples. And yeah. so I'm just tired of women being disqualified because of gender. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 5, 19, for as one man's disobedience, one man, not Eve, mm -hmm. one man's disobedience. I'm not saying Eve didn't make a mistake. Right. The many were made sinners. By, mm -hmm. So by one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Mm -hmm. Men and women together were both made righteous in Christ. That's so right. we need yeah. to stop arguing about that. Yeah, absolutely. Casey, what have you seen in this? Well, you know, I grew up... Um, just a lot of leadership roles were given to me. I think I was a very strong young girl. And so when I got saved at 21, I remember having a conversation with, uh, uh, I worked at a restaurant, so a fellow server, and she, in all authenticity, all innocence, she was like, how is it being a Christian and a woman? Yeah. And I was, I, sadly, I hear that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I hear a lot of women, actually, that are powerful women that are doing amazing things in the world say, I I can't buy in to the fact that I have no purpose, and so I can't become a Christian. Exactly, and not only did she leave that Terrible. church, she grew up in a church where she was suppressed. She left the church. She left the faith. She is no longer a believer because she wasn't empowered. She certainly wasn't groomed yeah. by any means, and so that was really my first encounter after I was saved with that whole notion, and um, it's just it, it was difficult for me because I, I think that leadership is just in me. It, like you were saying, it's not about a man versus a woman. It's more about the, the together, 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 yeah, and also, and, together. and also the individual knowing their identity in Christ. It's, it's about who am I called to be? If I'm called right. to teach, if I'm called to preach, if I'm called to lead or whatever, um, who is man to say anything otherwise, you know? And so just knowing that that is my true identity, I think has really helped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is like a multiple discussion thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think we just kind of sc just scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. And so I'd actually love to come back mm -hmm. into a second part of this Absolutely. conversation. So yeah, anyway, I hope this is helpful. Yeah. I hope that if anything, it, it got you started mm -hmm. on some conversations. We want you to understand that God would not love you more if you mm -hmm. had been born a man. Okay. Nor would he be able to flow through you more if you were male. Mm -hmm. God hand chose yeah. you at this time to be a daughter without rival. And if you're listening in and you're a guy, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. A son without rival. And we need you to mm -hmm. be your uniquely God breathed, God created you. So mm -hmm. I hope this blessed you. We're talking out of a book called Without Rival, mm -hmm. Gender Without Rival. We have it faceted where you can do home studies with this, so where you good. can get together, have DVDs and yep. books uh, stuff for it. So Casey is like our point person on Succession. this session. I actually totally forgot to introduce everybody because this is our second one. So I'm going to do that now. This okay. is Casey Sachs. Hi. She works with us at Messenger International. She's part of the team. She's part of church relations. Mm -hmm. This is Hannah Cusack Cowart, who is also part of our team. We love her and she does everything her. beautiful mm -hmm. and creative and amazing. And this is my daughter-in-law, Juliana, mm -hmm. and she's 
she's team whether we should get paid or not because she's family <laughs> and she is pregnant with our fourth grandchild mm -hmm. and I just can't let her out of my sight because I'm worried she's going to go in labor before I get on a plane. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope this helped you. God bless.